Okay, so I have Susanna Lee here. Uh, how, thanks for doing this for me. Well, thank you so much for inviting me here. <laughs> hey, uh, can you tell me a bit about yourself or where you grew up? And Sure. Um, my name's Susanna Lee, and I come from England. I'm a Brit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was born in Reading, and um, my dream was to make movies and come to Hollywood and um, actually make a movie with Elvis. I was a huge Elvis fan. You actually dreamed that? Oh, yes. I used to actually see it in my head. And what's so incredible, Joe, I actually, um, Paramount Studios used to be the big studios that were always put on the news when they talked about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So I actually had a visual thing, i.e. the gates of uh, Paramount Studios. So I used to actually have my little dream about getting my Hollywood contract with Paramount. And then Elvis, funny enough, was under contract to Paramount and Hal Wallace. And um, when I was 18, I actually signed with Pal Wallace and Paramount. Uh -huh. Isn't that awesome? It is. It's, it's, it's really strange. Yeah. Yeah, how yeah. you zeroed in on that. Well, it was just one of those things. And then, of course, I mean, I actually made the film with Elvis. It was so exciting. Uh -huh. <laughs> how was Hal Wallace? Well, um, interestingly enough, he was always known as the star maker. Mm -hmm. And um, he, was, um, he was an awesome producer to work for i mean he was so professional he knew his he knew everything you know mm -hmm. he used to be able to tell you everything and strangely enough dolores hart who is now mother reverend mother dolores mm -hmm. um she also she and i have a little history because she was under contract to hal wallace right and uh, so we, we've been talking about her recently together uh, she and I have been talking about Hal Wallace, rather, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, we survived Hal Wallace. <laughs> Why do you say survived? I mean, was did he have well, a temper? I mean, or? He was pretty. He was, uh, you know. One day, I I remember. Um, I want to send you my book. Yeah. <laughs> did you write a book? Oh yes. Oh goodness! Uh, I also yes. do reviews on books, so yeah, that would be oh, good. Yes, I will. I'll send you a book. Okay. Um, in fact, it was um, Mother Dolores phoned up the other day and um, said she loved my book, which was really something. Uh huh. And um, anyway, so uh, one day I was late on the set. I was making a film with Tony Curtis called Boeing Boeing. Mm hmm. And um, the reason I was late on the set was because a guy, some guy I didn't know from Adam, has, was shot at a bus stop when I was being driven to the studio. Mm -hmm. So, of course, coming from England, I said, stop, you know. <laughs> and, and the driver said, no, 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 we'll be late on the set. I said, forget late on the set. There's a guy dying there, you know. Oh, my goodness. So I got out of the car, and the police arrived. And it was very strange. It was almost surreal, because the policeman looked at me. There'd been a lot of press about me recently. Uh -huh. And he looked at me, and he said, aren't you supposed to be in Paramount? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, I was rushed to the studio after this, as it happened, this guy died. And um, I wasn't late on the set, technically, but I was late signing in, if mm -hmm. you see what I mean. So, um, Hal Wallace got me up to these, uh, I was sent up to his office, mm -hmm. and um, I was fined, to kill a long story short, I was fined uh, to make sure I'd never be late again. Oh, goodness. I find a dollar a second, which was pretty, pretty awesome <laughs> yeah. time. And I was going, whoa. He said, well, you'll never be late again. He said, I can't have stars wandering around saying they look awful today because so-and-so died. I can't do that. Oh, my goodness. You're on the set at the time, and that's that. And he didn't care that even a person died? Well, no, because to him, it's, you know, I mean, I remember once, um, he was a very serious producer. That's what they do, serious producers, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about the money and all about the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, one day I wanted very much to be invited. I used to have quite a lot of fans that were in um, fighting in Vietnam. Uh -huh. And so um, they used to come and see me at the studio. And um, I remember going to Hal Wallace and saying, um, can I have some um, time off. I've been invited by Bob Hope to go to Vietnam, and I'd love to do that. Sure, um, USO, yeah. That's right. And, uh, and it never crossed my mind that he would say no. Mm -hmm. And he did. He said, no, I'm not sending you, letting you go there. You could get shot at. I said, oh, no, no, Bob Hope said there's no way, you know, we're way out of where everybody... He said, there is a war going on over there. Of course you can get shot at. I was so upset. And, in fact, Raquel Welch went to, instead mm -hmm. that year. 
Yeah, and the soldiers remember that. They look for that. I know. Oh, I know. goodness. So when did you first find out that you were going to do a movie with Elvis? Oh, um, I always remember it was at um, a lunch in the, ca in the uh, studio cafeteria. I was having lunch with Hal Wallace. Mm -hmm. And uh, the head of studio, um, Howard Koch. And he, they were working out that I was going to do a movie called um, Barefoot in the Park. That was going to be my big movie that was going to make me into a big star. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, read the book. <laughs> I'll send you. There's a whole load of reasons why I didn't do it. In okay. the end. Unfortunately, none of them. Um, a lot revolve around the boring Colonel Parker. But anyway, uh -huh. um, so, um, but before then, he said, I'm going to send you and Elvis to Hawaii for a few weeks. There was a sort of strange silence, and then I went, ha, ah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't want to go. <laughs> he said, are you an Elvis fan? So I said, ah, mm, could be. <laughs> so he said, uh-uh, we've got trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. But it still worked out. Oh, yes, it did. And we got on so well, Elvis and I, that uh, uh, what was supposed to be just a few weeks turned out to be um, double that. <laughs> uh-huh. Tell me about the first time when you met him. Oh, that was... Uh, people often say to me, how do you remember every detail of these things? But it's extraordinary, Joe. You know, you remember every detail when your wife said yes, uh, she would get married to you, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I remember every detail of these, because I was such a huge Elvis fan. Yeah. And I was sitting on the set in Hawaii. I hadn't met him before. And... Um, and so I was trying to look really cool because I was like, you know, supposed to be quite well known. I'd made a f quite a lot of movies by then. I'd been started to work when I was 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I was 19. So, you know, I was sort of a veteran by then. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I was, uh, I'd been told that Elvis, you know, all this nonsense about Elvis chatting up every leading lady is absolute rubbish, which I found out was rubbish, but uh -huh. publishers like to to say things like that. But anyway, um, they, everybody said to me, I don't think he's going to make a big fuss. He'll be very charming, and then he'll be surrounded by his guys, and that's it. Uh -huh. So I thought, I don't think so, Coco. I've <laughs> been mad about this guy since I was six years, 12 years old or whatever. So I'm sitting on the set. You have to imagine this. I'm sitting on the set on a little stool. Well, you know, one of those tall stools. Mm -hmm. I've got the script in front of me, and I'm pretending I'm looking at the lines, but really I'm thinking to myself, what I'm going to say to this guy. So I presumed he was going to say, oh, how do you do, ma'am, or something like that, to which I was going to say, oh, we have a good friend in common, to which he was going to say, you know, it was one mm -hmm. of those. Right. Which we did have a good friend in common, George Sidney, who made, uh, who directed Viva Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Anyway, to cut the long story short... So you had a script going through your head of how you were going to talk to Elvis. That's right. Yeah. And anyway, so I'm sitting there going through all this, and every, somebody rushed on the set and said, Elvis is coming. Wow! You know, the script went flying, and I <laughs> pick up my heart something, and I'm thinking, we've got a good friend in common. We've got... So, oh, calm down, calm down. And suddenly, this hand came in front of my face with a cup of tea in it. And I should have recognized his voice, but I didn't. You know how you're so busy thinking of something else. And this voice said, oh, I believe everyone from England drinks tea. So I'm looking at the teacup, and I'm slowly saying, but I'm looking up slowly, and I'm saying, no, I don't. And then I went, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, I went, oh, yes, yes, I love tea. <laughs> and it was about six weeks later before I admitted that I didn't actually like tea. <laughs> uh -huh. But, um, so what, what did he say to you? Or? He said, why didn't you tell me? Oh, you mean, uh, well, how, you know, he did the how'd you do business, but I was so shocked. Uh -huh. You know, um, I didn't, it took me ages. And then I, and then we, you know, we sort of got on and then, uh, and we started, he started making jokes and things like that. And I, I was quite quick in those days. That, and then I suddenly said, oh, listen, we have a good friend in common. Oh, did you finally got it out, huh? Yes. Yeah. And to which he really was just like the movie. He said, oh, really? Who's that? <laughs> and I said, oh, George Sidney. <laughs> and, then, and then we just went cracking up. And he said, why are we laughing? I said, I'm not sure. And I'm thinking, well, that's exactly what I was supposed to do. Uh -huh. So it was lovely. It was did you, really did lovely. you ever date him? Not really, no. 
But did the... Uh, well, we were going to make another movie together. Uh-huh. And um, the publishers offered me a lot of money when they saw a photograph of Elvis and I kissing. It had nothing to do with the movie. Uh-huh. And uh, I refused to... Uh, they, the publishers, all publishers said to me was, um, we, we like Elvis to have affairs with all his leading ladies, which is like, oh, right. <laughs> See, is it anything to do with Elvis? Apparently not. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. So then they said, oh, well, we'll make sure you're not published. So that was some, that's something they wanted. Uh, yes. Elvis was to be with all the women. He was supposed yes. to be a... Yes, because that's what they like. <laughs> So, um, and I also, uh, they wanted me to cut a last chapter in my, mo- in my book where I name who started the rumor that Elvis died of a drug overdose, which he didn't, of course, and it really harmed his, you know, his persona, his, uh-huh. you know, it's hurt, harmed. So they said, oh, people don't need to know that. I said, well, people do. Right. They do need to know that. And um, so, uh, but luckily, um, I ended up publishing it myself. I've sold about five and a half thousand and I've taken it to Australia and I go to Canada quite a lot which is lovely mm-hmm. I look forward so, to reading it it's real. I'll send it to you today <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was Elvis on the set oh he was great he was great he knew ev- he knew everybody's lines obviously his own but he knew everybody else's as well and mm-hmm. he was a fabulous actor how Wallace said that yeah uh, how Wallace said that this guy really needs to have some fabulous parts he is a very good actor mm-hmm so, um, and that was coming from a very, very, you know, clever uh, producer. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, uh, no, he was a very good actor. He could have, and he should have made many better movies. Yeah, it's end. a shame that he didn't get the chance to. Yeah, well, he, he did. He was offered them, but the colonel always worked out reasons and mm-hmm. all sorts of bad stuff. Did you have any run-ins with the colonel? Yes, I did. Yes, not a nice man. No. And that's one of the reasons um, I didn't do Barefoot in the Park, and I didn't do um, Easy Come, Easy Go. The, proje- the director of Easy Come, Easy Go, and last about, in fact, is coming to my event, um, mm-hmm. um, Night of a Thousand Stars. Mm-hmm. I'm dying to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. You there? Yes. Okay. Um... Okay, and what happened between you and the colonel? Well, he was just incredibly rude. Um, I mean, incredibly rude. He didn't like the fact that I used to tell Elvis, um, um, or talk to Elvis about movies, about other people that he should meet, and um, things like that, and to come to England, and uh, because there was a lot of really good movies being made at that time. Uh-huh. And um, I remember one day I was on the set, and... Um, I had all my makeup on, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, one of the assistant went came over and was talking about um, something or other. Um, you know, we better start um, clearing the set now. And the colonel said, "Well, why why should we do that? I mean, she was pointing at me. She hasn't got her makeup on. She looks a mess." So I went, "What?" <laughs> and I went marching off, and I went to Elvis. I said, "That's it. I cannot." Stand that man. So he said, baby, I'm going to have him off the set. So I thought, wow. So off he walked onto the set and he took the colonel to one side and there was a few words spoken and the colonel never came back on the set. So Elvis stuck right up for you then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But um, he did some dirty tricks on me, the colonel, for instance. He, um, he delivered um, to Elvis... Um, making out that I had so uh, uh, he was he invented or fabricated a um, um, magazine article uh-huh. fused photographs and stuff like that of it uh, looked like I had sold Elvis out you know uh-huh. stories and oh things. goodness oh yes and um, and normally if anything like that happened Elvis was very very serious about certain things and one of them was the press mm-hmm and he never, ever liked you to... He had certain rules, and, you know, to speak to the press without discussing it with him first was a definite no-no. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could drop you like a hot potato. I yeah. Mean, really. And um, so um, the colonel had someone deliver this um, article, uh, push it underneath my dressing room door, 
and he obviously had given one to Elvis, or somebody had delivered one to Elvis. Mm -hmm. And I was in a terrible state because I thought, oh, my gosh, that's it. That's it. He'll never speak to me again. Never mm -hmm. mind make another movie with me. I mean, that's, that's really it, you know. And um, luckily for me, um, just thinking about it now, it was so, gosh, it was so nervous-making. I was standing on the set I, because there were people. He had his guy standing in front of his um, dressing room, so I knew I couldn't go there, you know, and mm -hmm. I couldn't explain, there's no time to explain, it's just, that's it. Anyway, he marched, I heard the Cuban heels clink, 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 and everybody coming on the set, walking on the set, all these people behind him, I thought, oh, that's it, he's just going to walk straight by me, mm -hmm. which, you know, that was what he would normally do in a situation like that, mm -hmm. and he would be civil to you, I guess, on the set and everything, but that's it, as though you didn't exist. And um, and he came up and he flicked my uh, my bra strap, <laughs> oh, and he sort of put his arm around me and he said, "You come with me." And uh, so we marched off and we went through this whole thing about what happened. I said, "I didn't." I said, "No, I know it's not you." Mm -hmm. He said, "I know who it is." He knew it was the Colonel that oh, did yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, the, the, uh, he always had the guys around. Uh, how were the guys? No, not always, but he used to throw them out when we were um, talking or whatever. But, you know, they were, um, a lot of them were around a lot because their jobs were to do whatever right. needed doing at yeah. the time, you know. Did you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Elvis? I mean, to oh, be yes. able to talk and... Oh, yes. Yeah. A lot of time. Um, we talked a lot about religious... Um, situations in our lives. Uh -huh. I was pretty religious, I still am, in so much as um, I had a really rough childhood. I found my father dead when I was six, and um, I had a sort of ex religious experience in a, mm -hmm. in a um, convent uh -huh. when I was really little, and um, so he was fascinated by all that, uh -huh. because at the time he'd been praying that somebody who would come into his life who gave him some concrete fact that Jesus did, God did exist. Right. right. And I said, oh, yes, this is what happened to me. And I told him. Mm -hmm. And um, he was, you know, did he, he used to spend hours talking. Yeah. Did he ever talk to you about his mom? Yes, only a little, but he said she would have loved me. I remember him saying that. Yeah. When was the last time that you saw Elvis? Well, I'm going to send you the book. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I, I should... Send but the you. listeners need to know. Yes. Um, well, um, it's it's difficult to say, really. Um, I mean, it depends how spiritually minded people are, you know. So um, I wouldn't say... Uh, I would say last July the 26th, but then uh, not everybody is going to uh -huh. go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, oh, you and I are going to have to talk for sure. Uh, but uh, when was the last time that, uh, that you saw Elvis, uh, like after the movie and stuff? Oh, I saw him a, quite a bit. We were going to make another movie together. He, he'd uh, made a deal with Hal Wallace that um, although Paradise for Wine Star was technically the last movie Elvis was under contract to Hal Wallace to make, mm -hmm. um, Elvis went in one day and um, did a deal that um, um, he would make another movie, but on the condition, and only on the condition, that I was the co-star. Uh -huh. And um, it was very funny. He took, when he told me about it, he said, I just... Um, he walked into Hal Wallace's office, apparently, and said, um, Hal, this is your birthday. And Hal Wallace looked a bit bemused, and he said, well, um, actually, it isn't Elvis. He said, I'm going to make another movie for you with Susanna Lee as the co-star. He said, oh, it is my birthday. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was equivalent to somebody off just get, handing him over three million, you know. Yeah. Well, n no Elvis movie ever lost money. No, absolutely. Yeah. He's the only actor in history um, that um, I do sometimes do um, um, talks about... Um, Hollywood and what mm -hmm. it's like to be there and stuff like that. And uh -huh. um, uh, it's amazing how I, I put up on the screen various actors and actresses over the years. 
mm-hmm. who I've met or, you know, from Gloria Swanson and things like that. And then I say, you know, to the audience, um, who do you think made, um, you know, made uh, the most money and was the most successful? I, and various people will say, oh, Mae West or whoever, you know. Uh-huh. And, of course, Elvis was the only one who never, ever made a failure of a movie. Yeah. And no one to this day can say that they haven't had a bummer as a movie. Yeah. Did you go to the uh, the grand opening of the movie uh, with Elvis, or...? No, unfortunately, I was making more movies in Italy at the time. Mm-hmm. I was... Uh, I made 27 movies. Yeah, oh, my goodness. And, um, 27 movies. Yeah, there's quite a lot, really. Um, and I co-starred in most of them, or starred in a few as well. And so... Um, I was working all the time, so I didn't actually, I still quite, quite a few, I had my own television series too, called Twas the Twelve, The Three Stars, and I haven't seen any of that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there's quite a few movies I still haven't seen myself. Oh my goodness. So, well, they say uh, Elvis didn't like to see himself either, so, is that something, just an actor? Oh, it's funny, about one of my movies was called The Deadly Bees, uh-huh. and, um, um, I was signing uh, some autographs um, in a, uh, you know, autograph place not that, uh, a few years ago, mm-hmm. about three or four years ago, and um, there was a girl came in, a woman came in, and she said, oh, she said, it's because of you, I can't be near bees. So I said, oh, really? He saw the deadly bees. And so she said, <laughs> yes, but you need to know the story. So I said, oh, Okay. So apparently, um, her father used to be uh, work at the gate at Graceland uh-huh. when Elvis was uh, living there, and this is like in the mid '60s. And um, she was a little girl of about 12, and she always used to hang around and play, you know, around there. Mm-hmm. And so one day, Elvis came out and he called everybody, "Come on, everybody! I want you to see this movie." So uh, she said, "Oh, can I see it, Elvis?" So he said, well, I don't know, I don't think so. Oh, well, all right, yes, you can. So it was the Deadly Bees movie with me in it. Uh And these bees, and she said, they were so terrifying. (laughs) Jeez. And I was 12, she said, I was 12, and they've never been able to be in a room with a bee again. Oh, goodness. I know. When did you hear that, uh, when did you hear that Elvis had passed away? I heard, um, I was in London. And I went to sleep, and I had this incredible dream. Really? And Elvis came to me in this dream, and I hadn't exactly dreamt about Elvis um, very much. And Elvis came to me in this dream, and he was all in white. And it was an extraordinary experience, because I recognized the white, 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 because I, a couple of years before, I had died for two minutes in a car crash. Oh, my goodness. So I did sort of recognize that, but it was a dream. So, and he came into this dream and he said, I'm fine now, I don't hurt now, um, but tell them, and I'm saying, who, who are they, you know? And he said, you'll know, tell them that it was my colon and it was, you know, mm-hmm. but it was, and I didn't know what he, actually what he was talking about, but you know, it was so nice to see him, he looked gorgeous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, then he said, I've got to go now, and he sort of was going backwards and, and the phone was ringing, you know, when you get woken up. Right. So I... Uh, you're I half asleep, you're half awake. It. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I picked the phone up, and it was CBS Live from New York saying, can they, uh, could I give my, um, what, how I feel about the death of Elvis Presley. Oh, my goodness. And that's how you found out? That's how I found out. And then uh, I was, of course... I thought it was extraordinary, but I didn't think too much about the dream until a few hours later when I was at the television studios because mm-hmm. I was the only person officially that knew Elvis in England. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people were coming out of the, you know, closets. I had a secret affair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I need you to tell me, what are you doing now? Tell me about the, uh, the, the Stars event that you're doing. Oh, well, this is very exciting. Thank you for asking me. Um, I'm putting on uh, an, an awesome event. It's not just going to be an event. It's a historic event. Um, I'm bringing into Memphis 25 co-stars and directors, a couple of directors, co-stars that have never been 
um, to Memphis, <laughs> and certainly not a lot of them have never talked about um, their um, experiences with Elvis before, other than in their own dining rooms and things like that. They have some incredible stories. So if real Elvis fans want to know what it was really like to be there, they've got to come to this event. But it's important that they check out the website. It's nightofathousandstars.com with the